right? Then they're going to be more supply and price goes down and what happened? They're going to be market failure. Or if what if people refuses to pay? So when the market fails, what happened? Government can intervene to promote efficiency and equity. So equity, let's talk about that. Invisible hand may fail to ensure that economic prosperity is distributed equitably. So do you see this, this kind of equity amongst the player? So football player and snooker player, snooker and football, both are sports, but football players are paid crazy limit. You know, the money that they gain, it's crazy as compared to snooker. So invisible hand, yes, it uplifts the society, but it does not ensure equity, which means average one should be treated fairly. Right? Similarly, the invisible hand in which everyone is monitored through their self-interest or they become selfish. So it does not ensure that everyone has sufficient food or clothes or health care. For example, old people, they cannot afford to work from you know nine to five. They cannot survive in that society. Or if everybody is selfish, then there won't be any parts because then parts going to be used by everyone. It's free for public use. Nobody will make the you know, free parts. So it will be only open to those who can pay. Or maybe if they pay, the, the price is going to be very huge because then everybody is going to be a profit-making company. Even the parts, public parts are going to be a profit-making company. Right? So that's why government sometimes, not all the time, sometimes intervene. So how government intervene? They tax, make charitable institutions and offer public health care. So yes, invisible hand can play a vital role, but at certain point governments are needed to improve market outcome. Why? Because government will provide equity as well. Okay, from now on, number eight, nine, and 10, we'll talk about the macro stuff, which is on aggregate level, in which we talk about how economy works as a whole. So principle eight, which is the standard of living depends on country's production. So in 2003, there was a research and they compare personal income. The individual in US, the annual income was, personal income was $3,700 in Mexico, $8,950 and in Nigeria, $900. So can you guess which country, in which country its, its citizens are enjoying highest standard of living? You can easily see that in US. Why? Because you can find out the standard of living at least by comparing their personal income. Right? If you don't have this data, you can also compare the standard of living through minimum wage law. If government enforces that the unskilled workers would be, should be given $2,000 at least. Then nobody can give a janitor $900 or $1,000, right? Or $500 a month. Then everyone should be paid $2,000, unskilled worker. In that case, the people's standard of living increase. And by compare the GDP, which is gross domestic product or nation's production. 
so the country that will produce more it means they will the their population they will receive more and they will receive more that they, they have more money to spend on their living standards right so we can compare the standard of living so three ways number one comparing personal incomes so that country in which the per capita income or personal income is higher that enjoy good standard of living and where the government introduces minimum wage laws that countries enjoy standard of living third one you can also guess or you add, and you know have educated guess by seeing the gdp that if the country's gdp is higher it means they are uh, in they will be affording good standard of living in that country fairly simple right number 9 so prices rise when the government prints too much money there we go so this is a little bit tricky for those who didn't study macro so for them it will be a little bit tricky but don't waste too much time here because our goal is to understand micro not on the government level on individual level so um, because since this is a part of your principle so i'm just going to be giving you a little, little you know insights here so what does it mean by inflation it means increase in the overall level of prices in the economy right it means constantly the price of the products are rising we call that inflation so one cause of inflation is the growth of quantity of money if the government prints money if the people have more money or if if the government prints money then what happen the price or sorry the value of the product start increasing for example let me give you the idea here for example let's take the example of banana and apple so you have case 1 you have two bananas and two apple and this is uh person x and this person y if person x wants to buy an apple he can exchange one banana with one apple simple right what happen if the person y he got six banana a uh, six apples and person x has only two bananas now what will happen if person y wants to have one banana then one banana would be three apples okay. right so yes you can just switch off a uh, switch these banana with the product or quantity with the apple with price or dollar money supply so if your production is the same it's not growing what happen people will be having more money or the government's printing too much money it means that prices of the product of the banana start rising yes who was asking question no one okay so when the government creates a large quantities of money the value of the money falls so this is called the value of the money so previously from i'm just switching this apple through dollar previously you can buy from 1 dollar one banana and now you can buy one banana but 3 dollars it means value of the dollar falls now you have to pay more dollars to get the same product it means value of the currency falls what happen if the people have too much money or if the government prints money so that idea you know if people need money government should print money and give to the people that idea that's why is not 
practical it's not logical right so here is a case study for your curiosity that the largest bank note in the history of banking was introduced in 1993 and this is 500 billion dinar not million not thousand it's billion issued by yugoslavia in 1993 and from this note what you can buy a small bread right what happened because the government think that okay we can if there is you know people we don't have money to pay the wages why don't we ask send you know yeah, it's or central bank to print so much money so when central bank printed so much money what happened people are getting more money and what happened the production doesn't increase what happened prices start rising and up to that level look at that mess they have created in 1993 so their financial system was totally lost this also happened in zimbabwe when zimbabwe dollars just loses its value you can just refer to some youtube videos you can find out that in zimbabwe you know you can carry a lot of a bag full of you know a zimbabwe dollar and you can buy just a small piece of bread this is also happening in venezuela as well i don't know whether they improved their currency or not but previously it was happening over there because their local currency started decreasing and now people are switching to the dollar they don't care about it because they don't know whether the local currency going to be you know stable or day by day decreased so that is just for your